following upon what we just discussed, uh, what about the extraordinary form? Uh, there's been the, you know, the reform and the reform that began uh, within the church uh, under uh, Pope Benedict, and we've seen many parishes now turn to uh, uh, offering uh, the extraordinary form mass, or at least the Novus Ordo in Latin. Uh, is this something that Catholic colleges ought to be engaging their students in, introducing their students? Most young people today have not grown up with that, uh, the form of the Mass, and so are particularly maybe unaware or even uncomfortable with it. My perspective, I'll just relate to the Sumorum Pontificum was promulgated in 2007. I was Archbishop of St. Louis, and my perspective was if this is a form of the Roman Rite, it should be accessible uh, to the faithful. And, uh, and I immediately instructed the seminary to introduce a course in the, to instruct the students in the, the seminarians in the extraordinary form to in various ways to have, to have the Mass celebrate the extraordinary form. And I believe, too, at the universities, that and I, there will be a response. There's no question. I've been invited just this some months ago now to Georgetown University. There's a, a student, a group of students there who are very devoted to the extraordinary form. Uh, and the experience was a little bit unusual in that originally I was invited to have the mass on the campus. And then suddenly that wasn't acceptable. <laughs> well, we, we had the mass anyway in McLean, Virginia, at the and there was a wonderful outpouring, a wonderful participation of the students and in meeting them, just the finest young people. And uh, I've seen this also in other universities too. Where you uh, you will hear from from. Uh, Matthew about the experience at Harvard. They have a human tutor group there. But uh, these are things that uh, may involve some suffering. Uh, but uh, the thing is, if we're doing something that's very beautiful for the glory of God and, and for the salvation of souls, we ought to persevere in it and not let ourselves be discouraged by people who don't understand or who want to be difficult. Well, I think that you know you really can't underestimate uh, taking young people in that uh, age of their life when they're so formable and so open to so many different and beautiful things. I mean, you're talking about you know 18 to 21 year olds, especially in undergraduate and graduate uh, students who obviously want to go uh, as much as possible into the essence of things, and introducing them to uh, the liturgy is uh, is an amazing thing, and I'm, I'm a product of that myself. Um, Dr. Foley mentioned Baylor. Uh, I was raised as a Baptist in South Carolina, so Baylor was our partner. Um, and in going to college, to Christendom College, was the first time that I really discovered the liturgy. And I found a place in which the chapel was quite physically at the heart of campus. And uh, so many things kind of were centered around the celebration of the liturgy and the sacred. Uh, so, you know, we all learned Latin, we all learned Gregorian chant, we had, uh, you know, at least at that time it was the ordinary form in Latin, sung every day. And it really is an incredible thing when you get a bunch of 20 year olds who are all singing their hearts out in Gregorian chant. I mean, it, it gives a sense of Catholic identity uh, in a very powerful way. And so I think that. Um, not only in kind of theological curricula and the core curricula of, of Catholic institutions of higher education, but just in the lived experience of the liturgy uh, is something which can form young Christians to then be leaders in the world. Uh, and you know, I count my liturgical formation as an undergraduate uh, as one of the greatest graces of my life, uh, and I'm just very, very grateful for that. Yeah, concerning the extraordinary form, um, one of our co-founders of the college was Bishop Ricken, Bishop David Ricken, many of you know about him, um, a great supporter of authentic, all things Catholic, let's say, and, and authentic Catholic education. Um, but when the when the motu proprio came out, uh, Bishop Ricken was very clear he wanted to have the extraordinary form on campus. And it started with one low mass on Wednesdays um, because of popular demand from students, faculty, and staff. It increased to Sunday high mass. And then it, it, it went a further step and, and included Saturday as well. So three times a week, we have the extraordinary form while well, classes are in session. And they are the best attended masses of the week uh, right now. 
which would probably in some context be a cause for alarm and concern for us. It's just a cause of joy because um, this is the treasure of the church. It's such a great treasure. Um, and what I've, what I've been really struck by is we've had a few students come in to the college who not only never experienced the extraordinary form, but who um, grew up in a charismatic uh, environment, uh, praise and worship, they played the guitar or the piano in church. Um, and we've seen some really remarkable, I don't want to say conversions because I don't want to give the wrong impression, but we've, we've seen some remarkable um, shifts in mentality. And there's one young lady I'm thinking of who, she still likes to play the guitar around the campfire and so on, and that, that's fine with me, but she says, I've, I've come to realize that the Mass is such a great mystery, such a deep, profound mystery, that it should be approached with a kind of hushed awe, the reverence of chant, polyphony. She's in the choir now. She's learning Palestrina and all kinds of. So it, it's it's amazing what you can do with, with young people. They're very open-minded. They have a hunger for the sacred, as I said before. And so I think the extraordinary form is crucial for college and university chaplaincies. I, I I know that we all agree about that. I wish we could get the message to, to penetrate further beyond that. But I've just seen it. I've seen it in in 20 years of higher education. The uh, student center at Baylor University actually has the extraordinary form. It may be one of the uh, few student centers uh, for a Protestant campus that has it. And um, I have noticed an interesting reaction among the converts uh, to Catholicism that we, we get at Baylor. There are some who will convert and re retain a preference or develop a, a preference for the ordinary form in the vernacular. There are also others that, once they experience the extraordinary form, uh, have a very strong preference for that, and it becomes one of the chief draws for their coming into the church. And then there's an interesting third category. A couple of students have come to me who now attend the extraordinary form, and they're grateful for it, but they said, I may not have joined the Catholic Church had it not been for the ordinary form in the vernacular, because I was intimidated by the Latin Mass. Uh, I was surprised by that, we, especially we try to make the extraordinary form, forgive the phrase, as user-friendly as possible to newcomers, but, um, but they eventually did uh, develop a preference for the extraordinary form, but they did not start out that way, so I just offer that anecdotal evidence to you for your consideration.